Some good sized logs here. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's a big pine, isn't it? That is a pine right there. It's like it's, uh, 48 inches at the biggest point. 48 inch log. That's a big one. Um, from the tree is this live oak here? Um, it is an oak. It's not a live oak. I don't know which type of oak it is. To be completely honest with you, I'm not a. I was. I was not very involved. With hey, so it was some it. serious growth rings. The oaks do not grow like this in Wisconsin. That's yeah. for sure. Yeah, that's those. That's those are. Huge. That's like. You know, three half inch, three quarter inch. That's been sucking race. on a septic system. Yeah, yeah no <laughs> doubt. <laughs> it kind of looks like a red oak bark. Yeah. So tables, countertops, stuff like that. Cool. Um, this is probably a water or, water or willow. Okay. logs to but depending on the grade and the quality um, so we kind of sort them all out hardwood all goes in one pile it's all pulp wood um, and it's a typical like cardboard paper industry I guess okay um, pine will either be pulp wood we've got saw timber that goes and becomes two by fours two by you know whatever um, and then we've got another that's for Georgia Pacific so they do also two by fours ply logs stuff like that um, that's our chip pile that like I said, it gets all burned into fuel, basically, it turns into energy. Um, so what Kip does it at the multiple tree services that he picks up from, they'll build things like this ramp. And um, the tractor trailer will back into here and start loading it from here. Yep. And then start moving one way or the other to fill up the whole tractor trailer. Yep. And yeah, he so does it. The trick is he's got, he's got a big bucket, but. Yeah. He fills that tractor trailer in pretty quick. 15 minutes. Chips he can probably do in 20 to 30. Yeah. Logs are probably about the same. Yeah, I think we have four of these ramps spread out across different yards and whatnot. Um, but we use the same same ramps to load logs or chips, just different bucket, like Sean was saying. Okay. Uh, yeah, and then whatever logs we pick to saw for us, we'll take into our mill over here. Typically, um, it's our bandsaw mill. Typically, we saw our dimensional lumber. Anything under like 24 inches we can cut uh, in the throat of this saw. And so some slabs we'll do. We're working on some cypress right now. So it's going to end up being tongue and groove the V. So it'll be like interior walls basically. Okay. Um, so you're going to come in here. Start to the log. It comes out. And as you're starting to cut it, you get these slabs which will run through the edger. Which is basically just two table saw blades that will cut a straight true six inch or eight inch whatever inch board and then we pile them up in here and get ready to go to the kiln after that okay and then for our bigger logs i wish it was set up to show you but we've got this mill and you don't you send it to a kiln you don't no we have a kiln i'll show you, you have a kiln. okay yeah, cool on site. um so this is a lucas mill they're pretty popular in i think australia there's a lot of those trees fall in the bush down there and they can't move them out and right. so we had to take it out to the yard because we had a 18 foot oak log. We couldn't, wouldn't fit and it was too heavy to pick up and set in here. And so we tore it out and milled it just in the, in the log yard. So it's not set up, but you want to get in here, you can see it's basically a 60 inch chainsaw with a lawnmower engine on it. 23 horse Kohler, oh, and that's a 60 yeah. inch bar. Uh, and so that is tracks and so it you know you run it on these tracks lower it you know two or three inches and then cut it again all right uh, it's super handy so these for big tracks like over here but it's, it's work yeah my friends in guatemala are interested in in this because yeah. it you know there's big logs right there? down there 60 inch inside so five five foot inside the cut yeah we're potentially going to upgrade to a dedicated slabber mill so this also has an attachment it's like a nine inch planing disc. And so we can flatten, you know, once we dry the slabs, you can actually get them flat. Uh, we're like, we have a 24 inch planer, but you know, if you have a five foot slab, you can't do anything with it. Right. Um, but we're thinking about getting a dedicated slab where it's basically a bandsaw mill that's 54 inches wide, you know, hydraulic propelled, so you don't have to push it. And uh, you lose a lot of wood. You know, every cut is three inches of wood, three right. inches of an inch that you're losing, so. 
that's hopefully in the works in the future, just for speed and efficiency, basically. Yeah. Yeah, and then from here, we can go to the kiln. I'll show you that. Cool. We've got some wood in there. We have a kiln that'll hold 2,000 board foot. So those big logs there will come into here? Yes. So those will either go, what we'll probably do, is, since they're so heavy, we have a grapple truck, which you, I think you park next to. We had to load that thing. It's too big for the grapple to grab it. So we put a chain around it, drug one end up on the trailer, and then chain the other end. And it, it's just too big to pick up in one. So we'll we'll move the mill around those logs. Okay. Yeah, we wouldn't. We can't move it in there. Now, do you just live cut that right on through in big slabs, or yep. do you? Yeah. So typically, um, we'll cut uh, everything live edge, and I'll cut it down later. Yeah. Um, so we'll leave everything for the most part live edge, and then you know, as someone buys it or wants to order for a countertop, we'll straighten the edge on the back. A lot of, a lot of applications like that live edge. Sure. Yeah, a lot of people do, and, and we have, um, we do a lot of, you know, let's say that you have a woodworking business on the side, and you build tables and countertops or whatever. We have a lot of guys that will come and buy wood just for that, and they love the live edge. So typically, a lot of those guys will cut one edge off so they can marry two together, but. They, what kind uh, of tree we got going on here? This is a Japanese persimmon tree. It's actually prime time for the fruit. It tastes kind of like a melon, like a honeydew. Okay. Uh, they're really sweet. Feel free to take some if you want. Yeah. I'll tell you, that one looks all right. Is yeah. it is orange ripe? Yeah. Um, if they get, or is it? Like, see that one with the wasp on it? It's kind of red. Yeah. Those are good too, as long as they're not too soft. Okay. But yeah. Help yourself. Japanese persimmon right there. So from the mill, Stuff with the stacking rack, just so we can put our stickers in there for airflow in the kiln. Sure. Um, so we kit built this rack, so you hang your boards ten inches off that side, and you, they're all uniform. So when you're stacking them, yeah, important know, for the stickers to all be they all line in up, the yeah. line. So one on the bar, one in the middle, and one on the very end of the board. And that way, when you you know you get a full stack, you can set it on top of any other stack we got, and all your weights distributed the same. Yep. So that was. That was nice because it was a pain to try to match them up. And sure. Became more work. Yeah, the sticker process is the nemesis of every mill. It is. It's yeah, like. It is. It's just. It it's is what it is. Sit there and just pick it up. Yeah. <laughs> so now this is all through the kiln already. So this stuff here, yes, has already been dried. So most of the front two stacks are all going to be. You can kind of see the profile on these ones. Um, they're going to be ran through the molder in the tongue okay. groove of the V. Yep. So when you put them together, you have a V profile. Um, so all of this, and all this will be the ceilings. This will be the walls um, for a house. And then I'll show you inside. We have the flooring as well. We're doing hickory floors. Okay. And stair treads. So this is like an order. Yeah. So basically everything except for this gear from here up is a different order. But these three and those four or five are all one order. And then I still have three more stacks of hickory in the shop that's also going to the same place. Okay. They're cool. actually in Texas. So we're basically doing their whole house. Wow. wow. Yeah. Cool. Oh, was that Kip's friend where he just got back from? Yeah. Tony, he just yeah. went out to his daughter's wedding and uh, <clears throat> it worked out because he got to actually go to the house and do some measurements and yeah. make sure we had everything. So all this stuff is waiting in line to go in the kiln. Um, poplar, some sycamore, the cedar at the bottom. And then this is our kiln. Sycamore, what's that uh, good for? Uh, it's really pretty. It's got a lot of grain in it, a lot of pretty grain pattern. So that is going to be tongue groove as well. Okay. Uh, we've cut some that are real thick too for tops and stuff like that. Okay. But that's that's all for order. Basically, all this is for order. So it's going to okay. be tongue groove for the most Yeah, part. I saw that. The Is this, uh, yeah, is this sycamore? Like the radial? Yep, that's sycamore. So oh, that's like quarter saw. It looks like quarter right, saw. Right, yeah. if, if it was... Uh, if you did quarter sawn, you'd get a kind of a neat speckled yeah, pattern absolutely. like that. It's got a real, not super deep red, but a reddish hint to it, um, and a lot of, a lot of character in the grain. Yeah, cool. And then we have this is poplar. I don't know if you can pick it up on the camera, but it's a lot of spalting and yeah. stuff to it. So a lot of people like that too for, for the tongue groove. Just give it some character. Well, poplar so stable. Yeah. Like for using it for backing or different things. Oh yeah, and it's light too, so it's not. Yeah. 
it's not work to put it in your house. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so in here is the kiln. Put the light on for you. Um, so it's a condenser kiln, basically. So we have that green tarp on your left. Separates the, the front from the back, which is where the, the condenser is in the back. So these fans up top blow air towards the front door and then the condenser it forces it through the wood that's why we have the right so it in there. pulls it down here and then through the yep through the stickers basically and then on the back side we got the condenser that runs the water out and then if you maybe if you throw your phone up you can see a radiator on the far right oh, yeah. straight back basically. oh right back there so yeah. on that third fan we have a radiator we've got a boiler like a wood burning heater basically mm -hmm. and so when like this is pine, so you gotta cook it up to 160 degrees. Kills the bugs and it also will, it's called set the pitch, so it hardens all the sap. I don't have oh, okay. So you don't Typically have puddles, sticky. If you, yeah, if you don't do that, it's sticky. And then when you go to finish it, it doesn't dry. And Yeah, so the, the wood heater makes a huge difference when it comes to... Uh, and you're able to do that pitch. just with a, a wood outdoor boiler kind of yeah, thing? Yeah, I'll show it to you yeah. too. But it's nice because then all the you know, off cuts from the sawmill We'll cut into three foot pieces and burn in the heater to heat this. It actually right. heats Kip's house in the wintertime. So his, his uh, AC and his water heaters all run from, from the boiler. So okay. It saves a lot on the energy bill. Yeah. Yeah, we've got one at our shop. Yeah, it's so nice. Yeah, so this is the one that powers just the kiln. That's all it does. Um, and then we have another one that just does the house. It does. It heats the shop in the winter and then the house, like I said. Okay. But it's super nice. Cool. In the summer, it's not so bad when it's 100 degrees out. In the winter time, it's 50 out. Trying to get that to 150, it's tough. Yeah. So this is our dust collection. Basically, just collects all of our shavings, and then sure. we, uh, we sell those to, for horse bedding, um, or goats or chickens or whatever. Um, so people like that a lot too. And in a day, it was something incredible. Like what? You can fill up half that in a day? Oh, yeah. If we're running the molder, um, the molder basically has five planter heads on it that run all at the same time. So you'll take those boards that we saw stacked up, you know, 20 foot high, and it'll come out. Four side clean. Four sides clean, yeah. And the top is surfaced twice. Uh, and so it, it makes some tips. You gotta, you gotta actually stop and, and check it because if it mounts up, and you have to push it. So oh. If you don't, If you don't check it, Found this one out the hard way. It'll <laughs> blow all those chips on the ground. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then you got a big mess. It's like the guy that forgot to turn the shoot of the chipper around. Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> Shot the first big branch through. That's right. Out on the street. So this is in the wood shop. Um, it's a big band now. Yeah, that's a, basically a resaw. I think some of these have a date on it too. Yeah. <laughs> That baby's vintage. It yeah, is. like 40s or something, I remember. When we got it, I tried to call Stetson Ross as the company. We didn't have a book or anything on how to put it back together. It was kind of in some pieces. And they actually lost all their records, all their books in a fire. Their warehouse burned down. Oh, so wow. So you cannot get, unless you know someone that owns one, you can't get a manual for this thing. So you had to figure it out. I did not. Somebody else did for yeah. me. Kip's buddy did. But yeah, the uh, the drive system was taken apart. The, one of these bolts had sheared off and... This was just in pieces, basically. But it works out because this actually runs the same blade as our sawmill down there. Oh, okay. Yeah, so we just put that one on there and it works good. Yeah, awesome. Um, this is that hickory for the that same order. Okay, so that house. Floors, and then... Got a and will you, you'll you you'll mill it to the flooring? Yeah. So yeah, it, with so that planer. So that's the molder there. And uh, so it basically... Here, I'll show you that too. So it's got the five planting heads, and if you want to poke your phone in there, you can see the, the profile on it. Okay, yeah. Um, so it, when it comes out, it's you know smooth three quarters by six, and and basically yeah, ready cool. for finish. Another cutter here. Yeah, cool. Yeah, so there's one, two. This is three. Here's four, and then that's five. five. And it runs it upside down, so when you get it out, the face is on the bottom. Oh, okay. So this is your last finished one here. Yeah, so this takes the meat off to get it kind of close to the thickness. And then that's just a final smooth and just to make sure everything's good to go. 
Uh, but it's it's super nice. It it saves a bunch of time, and we wouldn't we wouldn't be able to do that order without it, you know. And this is a three phase machine. Yep. So yeah. most um, most of the equipment in here is a three is three phase. So this behind you is a straight line rip. It's basically a table saw with a chain feed system, basically. Yep. And so you take. You know, we, we do so I got a laser it. light on it to line it, it up? It does, yep. So that, we got a laser on the top, so you can just eyeball it okay. for your first cut, set your fence for your second cut. And then uh, it's nice, too, because we can cut real big slabs that you wouldn't want to have to push through a, a right. table saw. It just grabs it, and you come over here and catch it at the end. Yeah. 24-inch um, planer, 24-inch sander. We do have just a regular table saw as well, and our glue-up rack. Uh, some of our current projects... We've got a, this is going to be a floating bed, a walnut that will wrap this bed will sit on top of the headboard and then kind of have the appearance of it floating. I'm working on this thing. We got a, Do you guys have walnut around here? We, uh, not around here. You got to bring it in from Midwest? Most of Midwest. Are from Virginia and Oklahoma. Okay. Yeah, we have some friends that live out there. So whenever they have, they have some friends that do land clearing and whenever they have a big track that they're clearing, we'll go out there and cut the logs up and get what Okay, can. yeah. Show you this. Did uh, the last one out there in like Oklahoma. Oh wow. Oh. So a concealment shelf. So it just looks like a normal shelf. You cut whatever you want to in there. Well, Smith and Wesson. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my tape measures. That's exactly yeah. what I was thinking of putting in there. Away, so you gotta hide it. <laughs> uh, but yeah. they'll actually go out so they'll cut the walnut and then let it dry out there before they even transport to save on the weight and then bring are you going to bring it uh bring a mill out there to yeah so we have right around 300 cedar logs out there right now we went in march of 20 when covid first hit and cut down 300 uh cedar logs and then we're going to take the bandsaw mill it's mobile as well so we'll haul it out there and we'll basically just square up the logs so they'll stack on the truck oh sure and then haul them back here and and then cut them up again as orders come in and whatnot. Cool. And that's what we did with the walnut. We didn't do that, and that's why we're doing that this time. Is we ended yeah. up having to have two trucks where we think we could have got them on one. Sure. Just blocked. if there's yeah. Because it's a lot of weight and cool airspace. And I'll take you up here and show you uh, the table we're working on right now. This is a nice place to hang out in the summertime. Oh, cool. It's our finished room. So we're doing a river table right now. Black walnut and they wanted blue. So that's what they're getting. This will be on steel legs when it's all finished up. That is cool. Wow. He just... Is this kind of your thing or is this like... Was Kip doing this before? Did you... um, he did do some tables a little bit. This is... What I really want to do more of. Now, is this going to be a big, heavy resin that goes over this and makes it? Yeah, so it's flat. We, we you can technically pour this stuff. Like you could have potentially poured it all the way, but it's just so expensive. I always pour a little bit, of, like a gallon or two at a time, because if you have a leak or something happens, then you're out. Yeah, you know, right. Even if you just lose, you only washing, have a minimum amount of time right. before it sets. Right. So this will be when it's finished. It'll be flush with epoxy. All sanded down, and then probably a. Uh, okay, so the blue will come up. Yeah, so all the way to the level. Being poured, but the blue will come all the way up to the top of the epoxy. Okay. And then probably, um, we've been doing some like bar top finish on top, so it'll be another epoxy, real shiny layer on the top of it. And so then, when you get this up, is there a way to surface this? Um, we do. We have so that the sixty-inch bar. Um, yep. Mill we have out there. So we can put a surfacing bit on that, and so we have it on a table that sits flat. We also have a really big router sled that we've made, you know, if you just need to surface a little bit of it. Yeah. It takes longer, but we don't have to haul it outside. We can do it in the shop. And and, and that'll make this resin smooth, too? I mean... Yeah. It, you'll still have to do some sanding, but it, okay. it, uh, the resin actually acts very oh. similar to wood as far as okay. sanding, sanding. Um, really, the biggest difference is when you're sanding wood, you can get away with, you know, sanding the 220 or 320 and then finishing it. If you did that with resin, you would see all the oscillating marks from your sander. So you got to sand this to like at least 1,200, 1,000, 1,200 um, grit. grit. Wow. And that way, when you put your finish or your 
bar top on top, it looks, it looks clear. clear. Otherwise, it'll be cloudy and you'll see all the scratches. Yeah, wow. Impressive. It's yeah, going to be a nice it. table. So, price point on a table like this, pretty good probably, huh? Yeah, this... So we're we're kind of learning the river tables. Um, we just started doing. We did our first river table in January, and it was twelve foot four inches long, fifty two inches wide, and nine inches of that was a river. So we're still kind of learning the price points. We've been sure. practicing with different epoxies and stuff like that. But yeah, they're like this one. I think is about three grand. Um, you know, and, and up from there. It's kind of one of those things. If you have to ask. It's not your table. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> I saw that one that they sent down to Miami. Yeah, that was mahogany. It, wow. It was incredible. And like, as the weeks went by, you know, I'd stop by, I'd dump some chips or something, and I see that they, they progressed, but not that much. Yeah. And then, you know, the, so it was like the amount of manpower that put <clears throat> to that table. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then Crazy. They kept transporting it. It just was so awkward and big. Yeah. Yeah, those were, I think they bought two. Yeah. Those guys in Florida, they had two 10 foot mahogany tables and they put them outside. Hurt Kip's feelings. Wow. <laughs> Ouch. Yeah. <laughs> it is weather resistant wood. But yeah. you, you can tune into Game of Trees on YouTube and watch me climb a mahogany tree. That's right. You'll look at that log that that tree was. It was like, that's a log. Oh, yeah. It was a seed tree that they left. Really? In the, in the forest. That's pretty cool. And so it was, it was doing its thing. It had a lot of fruit, but yeah, yeah it was. Over four feet diameter. Wow. I'd love to get one of those logs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's peacocks. Oops. One of them. Oh, yeah, over there. Yeah, that's the male. They just molted a month or two ago, so it doesn't have a big one tail, but. It's driving me crazy. Yeah. They're loud and. High maintenance birds? Not really high maintenance. They're just loud and they're kind of curious. So if you're out doing something that's making noise, they react to it and, and are just annoying. But they're pretty. Open the door for some light. Oh, this is cool. I've never been up here. Yeah, so all these are like coffee table or dining room table stocks. So. Um, these are cedar. Wow. Red oh, yeah. cedar cookies. Um, is that like East, Eastern red cedar? I think this is Eastern red. I think it's actually from North Carolina too. Yeah, that's, um, it doesn't grow that big where I come from. No, yeah, that's actually pretty nice. When we get a lot of them that have, this one has a little bit. Well, we have big ones here, but then they're rotten in the middle. And so you start sawing them. Yeah. Like, oh. Can't get any decent boards out of there. I've got a slab like that 13 inches in diameter that's mm. 286 years old. Wow. Off a of bluff in that's Wisconsin. Cool. So that that's a cool piece. But So that's probably the trade-off. I don't think I've ever seen a tree that even had that many, close to that many. Yeah, years. you got to read it with a magnifying glass. Yeah. But uh, Pretty much everything else is cypress other than these are oak and sycamore. Yeah, this is cool. A little carve up the stump. Yeah. Yeah, so all of these were stumps. The loggers that did it. Uh, Bobby Goodson from the the TV show. Yeah, you know they cut them off above these stumps, and he saved them all. Have you ever seen that swamp swamp loggers? Swamp loggers. Yeah, yeah. Uh, That's cool. Yeah, Kip knows them and okay. speaks very highly of them. He he speaks Cajun. <laughs> <laughs> Where are those guys out of? They're from here. Oh, they're from down yeah, here. Yeah, th that okay. one crew is. Yeah. They aren't. They aren't Louisiana swamp guys. No. Kip could probably. Probably decipher it though. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. I think they fold that. That one, one's, that's the new, that's yeah. pretty cool. They advertise that they shut down the shop. Look at this thing. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, this year I think. So. Yeah, that's quite the table there. I try to pitch this to everybody as a desk. You yeah, there. you can sit right there. Oh yeah. Fill it with epoxy. It's like a like a corner desk or an L shape or something. And that's cool. It's like almost the same size all the way down. Yeah. That's, I've had yeah. some people tell me it looks like a bear. Bear head and his paw waving. I don't know, maybe. But no, no takers on the desk yet. Okay, well, <laughs> it's in my mind. That's right. <laughs> you just planted the seed. <laughs> Might have to come back. Oh, yeah. So it's a 
silk floss potentially, huh? Yeah. I wouldn't floss my teeth with this, but yeah, that'd be fun to climb. Yeah. Yeah, and I was telling Sean they're spiky all the way to the smallest limbs, all the way out. Yeah. The whole tree. My buddy in Guatemala was climbing a Saba tree and he came off and had a lateral swing back into the trunk. And this Ooh. The trunk was not too dissimilar to this. <laughs> and some of those, like this one, you can tell if it wasn't broke off. Yeah. That would do some damage. I mean, yeah, and the these these are, oh, sorry. No, that's okay. These are sturdy. They you are. Know? Obviously, they're just like bark. They get brittle when they dry out. Yeah, though. and then, you know, it rode 15 hours in a bobcat bucket. So they, yeah. a lot of them broke off or starting to crack halfway. But yeah, when we first caught them, it would take two of us to pick it up. In like one, two, three, and get your yeah. hands back, and otherwise it would get you. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, and here's some live cut logs, right? Yep. Yeah, so this will all cut with that mill I showed you. Thanks, Taylor. Yeah, not a problem at all. That was a great Happy little to tour. You. Awesome. It's Game of Trees. We're having fun in North Carolina. <laughs> Beautiful day. Like and subscribe.